What's going on YouTube? Welcome back to LTH. My name is Abe and in this video we're going to create a Zeph pool, move virtual machines to the Zeph pool, create virtual machines on a Zeph pool, and do live migration between nodes of our virtual machines. Now this is a standalone video so you can watch this if that's just what you're here for. But this is a part of our series, How to Set Up a Home Lab, where we've gone over all the things you can see on your screen. And in the previous video, we set up the Proxmox cluster so we can do these live migrations. So if you don't have multiple nodes and a cluster, you need to do so. You can watch our video on how to set up a cluster as well as our website has step-by-step -step instructions. To my cluster and you're going to need a dedicated drive ssd whatever to do this okay so you can see on my first node i have a dedicated ssd on my second node i have another dedicated ssd to do this exact task on so when we click on our top node we go over to our zeph we're going to install zeph and all these commands are going to be repeated on both nodes or both machines I'm going to do Reef 18.2. The repository is going to be no subscription. We're going to click OK. This is going to prompt us here in a second to create our Zeph pool with a yes or no. You can see the Y is capital, so that's default. So I can click Enter. If I wanted to do no, I'd have to type the letter N and then Enter. And so once this is done installing, I'm going to do the exact same thing on the other node. So wait until yours is done and come back to this video. Okay, so we can see that we have reloading API to lo load new Zeph Rados library or R-A-D-O-S Rados. And we're gonna click next. And then on here, we need to uh, select the network. So this is just gonna be the device's IP and slash A24. And the cluster network is also on this. Additional monitors are recommended. They can be created at any time in the monitor tab. Uh, you know, this is the monitor node, the bottom Dell machine we have click next and then you can see this gives us a basic what we need to do for the rest install Zeph on other nodes create additional Zeph monitors create Zeph OSDs and create Zeph pools so a pool kind of makes sense a group of Zeph uh, Zeph what am I saying data right Zeph data and so people might be like what is a Zeph OSD that is a great question because I originally had the same ID I or question geez as well so a zeph object storage daemon a, co a component of the zeph distributed file system that stores data locally and makes it accessible over the network so osds are on every machine has their dedicated ssd or storage and then a pool is all that data across multiple nodes just to give you a good heads up so we can do this exact same thing like i said on the other node so go ahead and pause this video once again if you did not go through those instructions um at the end of that if you have then you can continue watching this video okay so the next thing we're going to do is create monitors we can see because the first one we set up was the bottom dell already has a monitor and a manager on it but we need to create a, another one so that if one goes down, the other one works. In this case, it automatically just picks the opposite one. We click create and it's done that fast. So there it goes, it populates. And now we have two monitor nodes. And now what we need to do next is wipe the extra drives on each node. So we're gonna go to disk, click this one, click wipe disk, click yes. And then that's super quick. I'm going to go to the other one, do the same thing, wipe disk, click yes. And they're both wiped, okay? And just go like that. Yep, they look good. And then we got to create an OSD on each device. So under the Zeph pool again, OSD, create an OSD. It's going to select the only available disk use OSD disk, click create, and it's going to run that for us. So give this just a second. I'll do it on the other one real quick as well. All these processes are pretty quick, just like that. So not really a reason for me to pause here. Click create an OSD, click create.
And now what we need to do is create a pool using the OSDs. So if I go down here to pool, I click create. It is a size of two. And then you can name this whatever you want, but I'm just gonna do Zeph backup. And then uh, you can do on off PG auto scaler mode. I think a lot of people usually leave this to on and then you can click create. And you are done. So now we have a Zeph backup on each node. So if I drop this down, you'll actually see Zeph backup now exists on both nodes. And as you upload stuff to this, you'll see like virtual machine disks it will now reflect the data across both machines so you can live migrate. I mean, I could take a VM from here, push it over to the other node, and it's going to actually load the storage from the local device. The only amount of data that it's moving between machines will be the RAM. So that's really nice and convenient, and that also just speeds up the process, right? Because most of it's handled locally than over the network. All right, so for the next part of this video, I'm going to show you how to create virtual machines already on the Zeph and how to live migrate between the Zeph nodes. Okay, so here we go. The last part, how do I create a machine on my Zeph pool and allow live migration? Well, I'm on my PVE node here and I wanna move something to my bottom Dell node. I'm just gonna click create a VM at the top, name this Zeph LTH, let's say, right? And I'm gonna go over to OS, and we can see we have a local OS, and I can pick between my two. Uh, I'm gonna do Ubuntu server, why not? And then I'm gonna click next, next, and then the important part is right here. You want to select under your disk, your storage to be your Zeph pool. That's where you want this machine to sit so i'll do 15 gigs real quick click next i'll up the cores to two i'll leave the memory the same click next click confirm and i will finish so when that's done what you would have to do is start this machine and install it right and so you'd go like this you'd click start and you would install this. So you would go through the whole install process, whatever operating system you're using, and then you're gonna have to shut it down because if I go over to hardware, there is a local CD DVD drive, which like in theory, this is like seeing it as if it was a real DVD drive on this one node. So how could it move a local ISO image from a DVD drive to your other machine? It couldn't do that. So if I like click on this machine and I go to migrate, I can't migrate because of the VM with the local disk. So after install, I would just go to stop, you know, just to overwrote real quick for the video, but you should like properly shut this down, right? And then when it's done, I can go over here, I can click remove, click yes, and now I will be able to migrate this machine to the bottom Dell. There's no longer an error. So that's what you have to do. But I have one already set up right here with none. And I'm just gonna go over here, click migrate, click migrate again. And we can see that it creates a uh, connection on the remote node bottom Dell. And then it's gonna start moving the data to the other node, it creates a tunnel, right? And this will be faster if you have a higher uh, gigabit ethernet port or a higher ethernet port, right? Like I'm using one gig, if you have two and a half or 10 gig or machines directly connected together and not going through a switch, you know, this process can be much faster. And in a lot of ways you should technically do that if you're gonna use this in an enterprise environment. But because this is a home environment, we don't need to do that. And so this is just gonna live migrate over. And once that's done, we can see it says status complete and it's on the other machine without us doing anything and it opens it up and the machine never went down because as soon as it loaded it on the other one, it just terminated the connection on the other machine and there was virtually no downtime. And then you could go onto this machine and I could perform updates, right? I could check for updates, I could 
update it. I could, uh, you know, reinstall it, restart it, and then move these machines back over. And essentially none of my services ever went down. If that's for my friends with my video game servers or your customers or, you know, something that's important or maybe a Plex server and you know your family are watching a movie on it. There's a million cases, right? But that's it. So we taught you how to install Zeth, how to create your Zeth pool, and how to do live migration between machines. I hope that helps. My name is Abe and this is LTH signing off.